<laughs> so good. Okay, cool. I think it's going now. Perfect. And I'll send you a, a link of this episode afterwards so you've got it. But um, perfect. perfect. Sounds great. Cool. So we got Cody Haas here on the podcast with us. Um, pretty cool. So really excited for this because Cody Haas is amazing. He, I've been working with him for about what, six months now, seven months. Yeah, probably. Been, I think so. Yeah. Seven, eight, around the time period. Uh-huh. I can't really remember it yeah. anymore. <laughs> yeah. But uh, he's helped me out a lot with just like the mental game and focusing in on managing my emotions. Um, so Cody, you're a, a high performance coach and also addiction recovery mentor, correct? Yeah, licensed, uh, just licensed, licensed clinical therapist can do a lot of more of the deeper stuff to uh, get through more deeper seated issues that people may experience that limits their production, limits their identity, what they want to do and their purpose in their life. And so, yeah, hmm. it's pretty cool. I love it. It's like cool. just really good to go in and study all that stuff. <laughs> it's pretty fascinating, dude. Just from what I've heard from you, it's super fascinating. How long have you yeah. been doing it for? Uh, it's been about two decades now, just under okay. two decades. Starting, I started in working in prisons, um, mental health uh-huh. facilities, and then uh, been a decade in my own practice. So, would you say you have your ten thousand yeah, hours yet? Oh, I definitely have ten thousand. <laughs> I, I should. I right. keep track. Kept track. But I definitely have. You're an expert. <laughs> definitely have that. <laughs> okay. Cool. Awesome. Um, okay. So we've talked a lot about in my previous episodes about like the personality ethic, the character ethic. I'm a lot about like the principle center, the paradigms, how to shift the paradigm. And so now as we're we're coming, so that like sets up the book seven habits of high affected people by Stephen Covey. And now we're getting more into um, this next part is like, what is a habit? Um, What is it? How do you break a habit? How do you like put habits into place? And that's like what you're all about, right? Like you love changing people's habits and helping them instill new and better habits. Yeah. Um, So just like, what are, I guess, first off, like what kind of like joy and meaning has your job brought you as you have interacted with these people who need to change their habits? And like, what, what joy have you seen in difference have you seen in their lives as they've shifted these habits and changed them? Um, a lot. Oh my goodness. This is such, such a wonderful job where I get to see behavior change. I get it. And it's, it's pretty pretty limited how much I get to see no behavior change just because somebody comes in and they say I'm really motivated to change Mm -hmm. Uh, whether it be through some type of greater exposure to to get past whatever behavior they're experiencing and you always get to look back and I always have people reflect hey tell me what you would have felt a year ago if or how you would have dealt with something a year ago if you didn't have the knowledge and tools that you have gained with your own personal um, investments right or the studies that you've had hmm. it's really cool because everybody's like oh yeah I, I tend to forget and I tend to lose or forget the grace that I need to have for myself because I have made so much change and and uh really enhanced my development and maturity over the last year even mm-hmm. and so it's really it's really fulfilling and things I'm like one of the luckiest dudes on earth because I get to be around it every day and uh-huh. it like helps my behavior change so I get to teach this stuff and then I get to go live it and become less hypocritical over time yeah I had to own that too I'm like oh, man, I feel like a hypocrite most of the time <laughs> like I say these things but I don't practice them all the time <laughs> yeah so I'm like oh should I teach that no yes oh that's no. good I, I mean that is like a progression in this life though is very much all about becoming less and less hypocritical, less and less wrong, you know? Good, better, best, right? We're, we're wanting to, you know, promote the best in our brains and our bodies to, to get over our behaviors or habits that aren't so helpful. And a lot of times, in, if we give ourselves grace, we, we don't hit a lot of the lower than good. Most of the time mm-hmm. we hit the good. Uh, sometimes we hit some of the, the stuff that's not so, not so fruitful for our development, but um most of the time we're in good better best 
I think. Dude, no, I, yeah, I think it's not like, yeah, like I think a lot of times it's not like so much the bad, even though we, we think it is, but we're just like all striving to do our best and it just does lie in the good, better, best realm. So that's really cool. So essentially for you, like helping people change their habits is like a ton of fun. Yeah, it's hard. <laughs> there's, I mean, there's hardships. Um, I've got to, you know, I've got to see where they're at. Cause if, if they're more in, cause I deal with a lot of, a lot of the high mental illnesses, depression, yeah. anxiety, OCD, mm, addiction. Yeah. And so if they're not in that realm of wanting to go there, like sometimes I have to sit with people and just let them vent and just see, and just let them kind of spew all over my office for a second. Right. <laughs> just to get yeah. to that point where they can, um, know that I can, I, they can be, I can be trusted with their information. Um, and then eventually over time, once they, they get it all out then they can say, Oh man, it's, it might be fruitful to ask some questions about how to get over this instead of staying in this function. Cause some of those negative habits can be a really um, a big function for our brain and body that we just don't want to get rid of. And so mm -hmm. it's a uh, sometimes hard, but most of the time people are just like, okay, I want to come in and change yeah so hopefully they have the the sight of like you know seeing the end from the beginning the beginning instead of wanting it from the beginning that's that's a huge temptation for us to get into dude that's really cool you mentioned that um in this section Stephen covey talks about the three elements of a habit your skill knowledge and desire and it says like we have to like become aware of the habit what it is and then that's like a knowledge the skill. It's like how to actually implement the habit. And then we actually have to like want to implement that habit. Essentially you're saying, unless they don't have that want, that desire, it's like pretty hard for you to help people at all change their habits. Yeah. They, they may come in and say, you know what? I'm here. Change me. And I'm like, Oh, wow. I wish I was that powerful. <laughs> um, I wish I could do that. But that's not how it works. I really wish I could. Um, <laughs> But that skill, that desire, that that want, all that thing, all those things have to be there in order to get there. And that's why we we focus on the exceptions first. Like, what are the things that you actually have the skill, desire? Sorry, what was that knowledge, right? Mm -hmm. or the wisdom. Um, like, what do you already have that in? And so let's look at the exceptional things that you are actually you actually have changed in your past, and then starting there there's a lot of information for their own personal development there and perception that can help us build a blueprint for future uh, change or habits so like meeting them where, yeah. where they're at understanding that foundation and then building upon it yeah seeing what they've done in the past right mm, that's seeing cool what their expertise is so they can bleed that over into the areas that they want to change if they want to change Right. I guess that's under the assumption that they want to change. <laughs> yeah. No, we want to. So a subconscious, right? Right. It's a power, it's a powerful thing, the subconscious mind. I'm not really doing that. That's not me. I don't, I don't know. What? No. It doesn't matter that a thousand other people are seeing it in me. That's, their <laughs> that's not me. That's their problem. I don't need to change. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, this book would change that in my mindset. Believe me. Oh man, seven habits is awesome. That's so good. Um, on that same line, though, the very first section of this uh, chapter um, says: "So a thought reap an action. So an action reap a habit. So a habit reap a character. So a character reap a destiny." Um, so essentially, it's saying like it goes from thought to hack to action to habit, to character, to destiny, right? Like that process there. Um, so in like your work, um, having to help people change their habits, the first thing is like, is that like, how true do you find that statement to be? Do they change their, their thoughts first or do you start with the destiny? Yeah, unfortunately we've never been taught a lot of our value bases along the way mm -hmm. or that our thoughts are a direct reflection on how we're, how we're going to act, whether subconsciously or consciously. So I've got to see what that base is. If they've never been taught their core values, their core beliefs, it's really hard to, to get to that desire, that planning stage, um, or even changing a thought. If they've had those thoughts embedded in them, maybe from their um, inheritance of 
um, they're, they're, they're individual like ecological systems where they, you know, uh, been raised, how they were taught from their parents. Mm -hmm. There are just some different systems around them. So we have to go in and see what their core values are, core beliefs, because that really is going to help us get to that kind of that neurolinguistic. So the brain, uh, what we say in our brain and what we allow in our brain to go and, and make that change. So a lot of times, some of these habits, we just, we just do just because we learn them. We learn them sort of through survival. Mm -hmm. And we never knew they were wrong. I've got a lot, a lot of people that come in that never knew uh, whatever they wanted to change was actually not very uh, pro-social. Hmm. And so they're like, what? I didn't even know that was something that's off or not accepted by society. And so then we have to say, okay, well, how can we go in and gently do some brain surgery on that to, hmm. to get it out? So like, a lot of times we get conditioned by whether it be life, school, parents, church, whatever it is. And there might be just some kind of these habits that we do subconsciously, but we don't like, we don't necessarily compare them to other habits or other people. And so we don't even recognize that they're, they might not be the most effective way of, of doing it. Mm -hmm. hmm. So a lot of times, yeah, even when, people get into sales and they have a hard time it, there's a lot of information in that you know hard time yeah. there's a there's a lot of pre-programmed or preconditioned things that come in when we face that hardship and then we get the chance to rule it out and get it out process it or we can just say you know what oh yeah that means sales is not for me so therefore i'm gonna go home right <laughs> I'm not even gonna face it. I don't even, I'm gonna stuff it. I'm gonna, you know, yeah. I don't wanna learn information about myself and my subconscious. That's like a very painful process for them to go deeper and deeper yeah. into themselves and reflect and introspect on who they actually are. And mm -hmm. so just like avoid it, is what you're saying. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Or have some type of type of defense mechanism that says, ooh, let's just not go into that. <laughs> like, yeah i'm good i'll pass on that <laughs> pretty normal though right pretty normal yeah. not to want to right that happens like all the time a lot of times oh yeah i don't, wanna, time. I don't want to go and do that i don't want to do that work i don't want to spend hours on writing it out or do whatever so dude yeah it's like me with ice skating i'm like yeah yeah i don't know i don't i'm not sure if i want to go and learn to ice skate <laughs> Right. I keep following. I'm like, yeah, I don't know. Doing... For me. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> but exactly. it is like super cool how when you get when you do face it and get on the other side of it, the amount of like freedom that you do find. Mm -hmm. Um, I have, like in snowboarding, I got beat up so much trying to learn how to snowboard. Yeah. But then you do find that freedom on, on the other part of it now, where it's like now I just fly down the mountain and it's so much fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and having that self competition that the competitive spirit to learn something new mm -hmm. having desires having your whys is really huge and getting even more into the behavior change or the habit changing hmm. so how would you recommend best um what would be your like your best recommendation for just anybody to consciously become aware of those ineffective habits that they, that they don't even like know are there like what would be the best way to like become aware of those habits um, i think um more than anything our, our biochemistry our emotions are great indicators of of uh when we're experiencing whatever right whatever yeah. uh maybe something's coming up to sabotage us maybe a part of us in our history or our, um um, younger age developments coming in and starting to starting to come to the surface and so we use emotions and our chemicals as information to say okay i'm off right now obviously there's something to learn am, am hmm. i experiencing a, a flashback in some way that says i need to you know uh, avoid this or is this information that I can take to my higher power and go help get changed on this? And so emotions and our biochemistry, we've never been taught that. Mm -hmm. We've been taught like, oh, when you're, you know, facing some type of hardship, go do something different. Go distract yourself. 
<laughs> um, go do whatever. But there's some really cool neurolinguistic and cognitive behavioral processes to get to what Stephen R. Covey wants us to get to in that desire and that thought. Because we, we can literally go in and say, I'm, I'm going to get, you know, this is what my adversary is saying, or this is what the situation is saying, but this is how I want to feel. And so I want to feel this. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go live it out. I'm going to go envision it. I'm going to go see and even practice having that response. Because um, mm. we can reprogram our brain really well if we allow it. We can take responsibility for the training of our brain, mm -hmm. which is yeah. what separates us from animals. Yeah, for sure. Especially when we have that spirit and that, and that frontal lobe. We can, we can get out of that spin that happens in the midbrain, the amygdala, and survive mode, and say, nope, this is what I want to feel. I want to transition to the frontal lobe, get back with my spirit to teach my body and brain how I want to proceed with this type of experience. Hmm. So you said, you, you said the word spin to get out of that, that spin. Um, I've read Maurice Harker's book, um, like Dragons, Did They Fight? Amazing book. Um, really, really good. And I kind of want to go into that a little bit later, but first off, like that spin is a very important concept. Um, Cause it's basically like you're saying the emotions are the way we can, or about our chemistry is the way that we can interact or become aware of these ineffective habits. And like the spin is where it all starts. Right. So like, could you go a little bit more in depth, like what the spin is and how that can, how we can use that to identify those ineffective habits. Yeah. Yeah, very big um, midbrain. We can call it the zombie brain, the caveman brain, <laughs> the animal brain. Um, that's what the only thing that really separates us from animals is, or is, is our, our frontal lobe and our ability to, to reason. Uh -huh. um, other than that, we're just going to be going around, just eating and you know surviving, right? Mm -hmm. And so. Our brain has the amygdala, and that's where we have our brain bank of experiences, associations. And so we literally could be walking down the street at the store, at church, wherever we're at, and all of a sudden we get in some periphery, very subconsciously, something comes into our brain when you don't even notice. And all of a sudden we're getting chemical spills, um, chemicals in our body, similar to, we call it uh, renin, cortisol. Mm -hmm. gets stripped in our brain we don't really need to pay attention to the names too much but they're very unsatisfying chemicals in our brain that cause us to spin and it could be just triggered by that thought mm -hmm. and that flash and then all of a sudden we get that chemical approach and then with the thought the association the chemical we then experience an emotion it could be and this is not only for the bad but it's for the good too and mm -hmm. the father put us give us this uh, ability for the good to Satan and the adversary or our adversaries trying to just completely amplify right. for the bad. And so that emotion comes in and then that emotion with all that information that happened just in that millisecond will go to our brain and say, where have I felt that before? And what I do to resolve it. Right. Hmm. And so it's constantly, and we do that about, uh, about 10 times in a second. That's how fast it goes. So we're literally getting all these things coming in and the brain, whatever it's associated with self-medication or whatever to relieve us of, of unidentified emotions, we're going to go do that thing eventually unless we decide to have a neurolinguistic change, unless we try to change that habit. Uh -huh. um, and that, and if it happens in 10, 10 times in a second, that's 600 times in a minute. Dude, if we stay in that thought for an hour, do 600 times 60, dude, we're 36,000 spins through just within an hour. And so oh. knowing that, knowing that process, knowing that spin and being aware of it says, ooh, I can change that. I can go in and do a notice it, name it, flip it, find it. I can go and address the emotion. Mm -hmm. I can redirect my brain to go do something something more positive emotion mm -hmm. i do have to be aware that that negative emotion still has to run its course it still can be edifying though yeah i still can i still can go and edify that hmm. 
So like you have to, as long as you understand that process and are able to identify that a spin has occurred, mm-hmm. and then you, you like at that moment, you may not exactly know what to do with it, but you can then take that to your higher power or reflect on it and then kind of like through time and process and trial and error, get better at identifying it and shifting it to a more positive um, use is what you're saying. Yeah. Be okay to say, Ooh, I'd rather feel this, but be okay that the body and brain still has to go through their processes, but you can still, you can still get your reasoning. Um, even though you're experiencing pain, that's, you know, that's even the, even the pain that we experience, uh, can be edified. We can use sad experiences at edifying. That's why we have grief groups, right? That's why we can go and be with those that mourn and, and grieve with those that are in grief. That's why we have anger, you know, anger control group, or what is it called? Um, yeah, anger management groups. We can go and be edified because we're experiencing anger a ton, right? Huh. And so we can go and say, you know what, I'm, gonna, I'm experiencing this and I'm going to go expose it and turn it into something that can be actually really edifying dang that's like dude that's really cool thanks for sharing that um and that's the anatomy of, like, of changing a habit right what was that sorry and that's the anatomy uh to change a habit hmm. but just you know like i think you're it's just wise for you to say that man just recognizing that mm-hmm. and that we're up against that with our own processes in our brain yeah so important to just recognize it to just be able to become aware of it and to be mm-hmm. instinctively like knowledgeable about that it, it's going to happen just when will it happen so when you are a man you acknowledge your emotions and not your <laughs> grace. <laughs> when you are a man so you not only wear stretchy pants for fun but you acknowledge your emotions <laughs> um dude last question and then uh we can uh, end this going, going with that um, in here, he says uh, habits too have a tremendous gravity pull more than most people realize or would admit. Um, Sometimes I feel like we want to change our habits, but we don't like prepare in advance to like initially recognize that it is a problem or to initially like become aware of it. So like, is, is there any like, because Maurice talks a lot about like, as well as like the spirit of prophecy and like preparing for, for battles. And so like, what, what recommendations would you, would you give about like preparing beforehand when you're not in spin to better be able to control the spin when it happens and turn it to a positive? Yeah. Good question. Like habits, do you, we're, we're creatures of comfort. We're creature, creatures of habit. Mm-hmm. And the thing is, man, who are we letting define what comfort is? Hmm. Right? Are we getting the true definition of comfort? When we think of comfort, we think of, oh, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna push news, or I'm not, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna wake up to my alarm because I'm really comfortable in my bed and I don't want to. Right. right. But if we redefine comfort, we say, no, I'm really comfortable in my life. When I get up and do things and I start my, my scripture study, my, my gym yeah. time, that's what comfort is. For Ice, me, baths. Right? Ice baths. Ice baths. <laughs> like it's, it's important to check our definitions huh. um, big time in order to change a habit. If our definition continues to be, oh no, comfort is, you know, Netflixing and, and eating popcorn and just binging all day. Hmm. It, that might be the same thing that we'll just go and maintain Keep that going. function on but change huh. change the definition of comfort change yeah. the definition of work change the definition to fit your your mindset and what you want to do change the definition of exercise um, Dude, that's gold that's good stuff there because it's mm-hmm. a art like the current the definition that we have is typically a conditioning of society or of our culture or of our family life rather than like our choice our proactive choice about what comfort means to serve our purpose yeah i have to help a lot of people change the definition of alone because they're dealing with addiction the only time they give into addiction is when they have this 
negative definition of alone. Well, I'm alone, therefore I can do anything I want, you know? Yeah. And so changing those, changing the paradigm, it's huge. Dude, that's amazing. All right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go in and change my definition of comfort. I'll get back to you on <laughs> what I come up with. <laughs> Convenience. Dude, yeah, change, yeah. We just, we just do gent, we gently go in there and do that. Yeah. So, Dude, yeah. that's awesome. Thank you for, uh, for doing this, man. I know that uh, we're reaching our time limit. So we'll uh, pause there, but uh, dude, thank you. That actually helps me out a lot. And I'm sure anyone else who, who listened to this will greatly benefit from it. And thank you for letting me invite myself on your podcast. Cause I did that guys. I invited myself to be on Josh's podcast. You better and have. he was very, very nice to let me do it. <laughs> dude, thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs> yeah, dude. Thanks, Josh. Yes. Yeah. Later, dude.